My name is Kelly Hoppenjans. I am a singer, songwriter, and independent music producer. And today I want to talk to you about how to use a DAW, which is a digital audio workstation, to produce your own vocals. So what that means is when we produce vocals, we are both arranging them, deciding how the lead and the background vocals are going to interact. And we're also applying any effects, any editing, any of those kind of audio engineer uh, duties that you might think of. So we're manipulating and we're arranging. Um, these are great fun skills for anybody who likes to sing. It can be really fun to play around with your recorded voice and get creative and see what you can do. So I hope you enjoy learning some of these skills. I want to talk to you a little bit about the tools that we're going to use. So I am using BandLab today. BandLab is a free online DAW, digital audio workstation. These are just programs that let us record and sequence and copy and paste all our audio. Um, BandLab is great because it's free and uh, has actually a lot of capability for a free software. So I highly recommend it for getting started. Uh, some people also might like to get started in GarageBand. That's free if you have a Mac device. Um, you can access these on laptop or phone or tablet. Uh, I am going to use laptop because often, uh, in the case at least of BandLab and GarageBand, they have more capabilities on the laptop. So I find that uh, easier to edit in. So that's what I'll be showing you. But you can certainly access it from your phone and many producers do and uh, produce great tracks with that. Uh, so you will need access to BandLab or GarageBand or the DAW of your choice. There are certainly more expensive ones that you could choose. Uh, and you'll need a device, laptop or um, tablet or phone. And the last thing you will definitely need is a pair of wired headphones. They do not have to be as fancy as these. Uh, it's ideal if they cover your ears so that we have less sound bleed while you're recording, but they don't have to, they could be just um, earbuds. Uh, what they should be absolutely is wired because any Bluetooth accessories are going to have kind of a delay when you're recording with them. And that is just going to be a real pain to have to be messing with those constantly and nudging your tracks and trying to make sure they're in the right spot. So I would highly recommend a wired pair of headphones. Other things that you might want if you get really into production and you want to invest a little bit in it and try out some different things uh, is you might want a microphone. So we're just gonna use the microphone that's in my laptop um, because I think that's how a lot of people get started and how they are gonna take their first steps in recording. But to show you what you will eventually want, if you stick with it, you will need an audio interface. This just has a couple of input channels. You can input mics with these types of cables. It looks like this called an XLR. It's got these three prongs in it. Uh, so you can connect mics and you can also connect instrument cables if you play guitar or any other instrument that plugs in. Uh, and this allows you, this connects through USB or USB-C to the laptop. This allows you to record anything directly into your laptop using your own microphone. Uh, you might start out with something like this. This is an SM58 from Shure. Um, these are, you know, kind of your standard, maybe probably your cheapest and best microphone for the price that it is. Uh, but you might eventually, that's a dynamic microphone, you might eventually want to get a condenser mic, which will look something like this. Um, these pick up a little more detail. You can actually see, that's cool, you can see like the uh, the receiver in there uh, with the light that I've got. So these pick up a lot more detail. They're pretty nuanced, but they're very expensive. So uh, there's no need to buy one of those at the start. In fact, there's no need to buy a microphone at all at the start. You can totally get started with just what you've got. Okay, so I'm going to take you on a quick tour of BandLab. You go to BandLab.com and it'll probably ask you to create a login if you've never been on there before. So go ahead and do that. And then once you're past that, you're going to be on this landing page that sort of looks like a social media site. And that's because it is. You can share your tracks that you make on this site once you're done with them if you would like, which is kind of a neat feature. 
Once we're ready to create, we're gonna go, maybe unsurprisingly, to the top right where it says create on this big red button. You'll have two options. The first one is to create a new project, which will be totally blank. And this is a good idea if you have an audio track already that you want to sing to, or if you're going to create one yourself, if you play instruments or things like that. So that's a good way to do that. You might also um, use some of their samples. BandLab has samples, and I will show you where that is in a moment. Um, the other option here is this song starter. So they have an AI where they can generate a song idea for you. It's four tracks and you can customize them because they're MIDI tracks. Uh, you can change the instruments and change the notes around. And it's a really great way to get started if you don't play an instrument and you don't know what you want to sing to, but you want to write a song. Um, I highly recommend it. It's an awesome tool. But so we, for today, are creating an empty project. This is a song of mine called From Where I Stand. I co-wrote this with a great songwriter named Jillian Linklater. Um, and I thought this would be a great uh, example of lots of different ways that we can sing background vocals and, and record our vocals. So I'll show you a few of the key buttons. This up here is kind of like your file um, button that you click on, these three lines. So you can start a new project from here, or open a recent one, you can save it, publish it on the social media wing of the site. And there's other settings and tools and things like that that might be helpful to you. Uh, these are our undo and redo buttons, but BandLab, like many DAWs, has short keys. And these two, at least, are really familiar, uh, really um, similar to what you might use on other, uh, other applications. So, um, to undo is just Command-Z, and to redo what you undid is Shift-Command-Z. Very useful buttons. If you make a mistake, you didn't mean to do a thing, just undo it. Um, I believe those are Control-Z or Shift-Control-Z on Windows. Um, over here, we have our metronome. When it's blue, it's on, and I highly recommend recording with a metronome. Um, even if you, you know, play an instrument yourself and keep great time, uh, it's still really helpful because everything can kind of snap to this grid here. It can really help when you're layering multiple tracks just to make sure that you're all, that all of your tracks are playing to that same click. So that's blue, that's on. You can change your tempo here, just type in the number that you want. You can also change your time signature here if you wanna do that and your key. Also, if you drag audio in, it will automatically uh, recognize your key, which is a pretty cool feature. Um, this is useful if you want to do something like the pitch correction that they have, this auto pitch. And I'll talk about that more uh, in a minute or two. These are your play controls. This is just, little, this will tell you the measure that you're at. Uh, here's your play button. And I want to note here, if you hover over anything, um, it will tell you the... Uh, short key for it. This is actually saying left or right. Oh, which just kind of moves your cursor left or right. So that's not what I typically use to, <laughs> to play. The short key that I'm familiar with is a uh, space bar. And there it is playing. So if you want to uh, play your track, you can press space bar or you can press this play here. You can also press space bar to stop it. Um, this will send you back to the beginning, so this cursor that we had that we can move with left and right. Um, if you want to bring it back to the beginning without manually, you can also click on it and drag it. If you don't want to click it and drag it back to the beginning, you can hit this or press return or enter, and it'll go back. This is our record button, very important. Uh, you can also press R if you want to use that to record with a short key. Uh, this is our loop or cycle, they call it. So that's short key C. And um, I think pressing the C will just, yeah, turn it on. This is our loop section. So we can drag this to the section that we want to loop. Let's say it's just one bar. And it'll just loop that section over and over and over again. This can be really good if you're comping vocals. We'll talk about what that means and you're trying out different takes and you wanna see which one works for that two measures, uh, that's a really good button to, uh, a really good feature to use. But I don't think I'm gonna use it today, so we'll leave it off. Um, this is our overall volume, and generally speaking, unless you're blasting your ears off, you don't wanna mess with this too much. Um, if you see 
red over here, that means that the sound is getting distorted or clipping, we might call that. And to fix that, we are generally going to do things over here with the tracks themselves, not dragging this left or right. But if it's too loud in your headphones, you could turn it down that way, or you could just turn down your headphone volume. Save is a very important button. Um, save is Command S is the, the short key for that. And you'll want to save as often as you think about it. It's a really good idea to, after you've recorded something that you like, just go ahead and mindlessly press Command Z, or sorry, Command S, not Command Z, or Command S or Control S, and, um, and just save that so that you've got that. Uh, you can publish here when you're done. Uh, there's also, you can zoom in and out, or you can use um, the kind of, uh, the keys that you have on your uh, computer to zoom in and out, or you can do, um, for me, it's like uh, fingers, and drag the fingers on the track, either out or in. Uh, and there's also this magnet here. So this is your snap to grid, and it's like the metronome. If it's off, it's white, and if it's on, it's blue. You'll want this on, generally, because that'll mean if I cut a piece of this and I want to move it to a different track, that'll mean that my cuts will happen on the grid and that when I move it to a different track, it'll it'll snap to that same line or it'll snap to the line that you drag it to. So you can see this cursor kind of jumps when it reaches a line. That's the snap to grid feature. That means you know it's directly on the start of measure two. A couple other things over here. When we want to add a track, we're going to press this add track button. Um, I want to point you to where those samples are. That's down here on the bottom right under band lab sounds. You can find lots of samples once they load for me here. You can find lots of samples that you might want to use for uh, your recordings. For some reason, they're not uh, loading for me, but uh, that's where you would find those. And you can just literally click on them and drag them. You can see where you can drag an audio file. You can just drop them right there and then put them where you want them. Uh, other things about the track that I'll just go over quickly before we start uh, with our recording. So this is a mute button. If I don't want to hear the ukulele track for some reason, maybe I just want to hear my voice. We can mute that and it'll turn gray so we know that it's muted so that we can remember. And then you can turn that back on when you want to hear it. So that's the mute. And then you might want to solo. So sometimes you've recorded something, you've recorded like 10 tracks and you just want to hear the one you just recorded or the one you recorded first and see if there's like something you want to change about it. So you can press that solo. This is our volume slider for this track specifically. And this is where if we have clipping issues, we're going to fix some of them here. Uh, this is also where we're going to balance the tracks with each other. If my ukulele is a little too loud and I can't hear my voice, I'm going to turn it down. And then finally over here, this is panning. So we can turn things so to where they sit left or right in our headphones or in our speakers. And generally what we're doing when we're producing is we're creating a space. We're trying to evoke a space for people to listen to. And so with that, you don't necessarily want to have two voices say right on top of each other because uh, it won't evoke a space where that might happen in the real world, right? Two singers might not be necessarily like standing right on top of each other. Although sometimes you don't want to evoke a real world space, so you might want to do that. But so for me, I know I want my voice dead center and I want the ukulele close to it, but just a little left or right of it so that it's not the main focus. So I've moved it just a little to the left. Okay, so with that, I think we are ready to record our first vocal track. I, as I said, am just using the microphone that's in my laptop. So we're just gonna do it like that. We're ready to add a track, so we're gonna press this button. Uh, we're gonna do voice slash audio. Here it is. Uh, when it first comes up, it shows you this menu, which I'm gonna, for right now, ignore. We're gonna close that. Okay, so I'm gonna take a couple of takes. So this is gonna be 
lead Vox, take one. And I'm gonna wear my headphones so that there's no audio bleed. And we will just record a piece of this and see if we like it. It's best to record probably like three or four takes of your lead vocal. And I usually do this through the whole song, but some people work in sections. Um, I like the whole song because you get kind of a run up to it. And, um, you know, you might try things differently. You might get more kind of into the moment if you sing the whole song. Uh, but for demoing today, I'm just going to do a couple of sections. So here we go. Sometimes I think I'd like to go to Paris Sip some wine and look out at the sand Walking down Champs-Élysées just get it our way I like loving you from where I stand We are all we need for an adventure When I hold your hand That's our grand romance oh. and That's all I'm going to do for right now I like that take, that looks pretty good what I am going to do is I'm going to turn my metronome off. I found it sort of distracting. So since I have this ukulele that's pretty nice and in time, I'm going to sing to that. And I don't think that I need to have the uh, metronome on while I'm singing necessarily. If it's messing with your vibe, but you feel like you can still keep it in time, that works. All right. So then we're going to do lead vox take two. And importantly, this time... I'm going to mute lead Vox take one. That one's done. I'm not going to listen to it yet. I'm just going to say, okay, I learned some things from the first take. And so I'm going to do it again. Here we go. Sometimes I think I'd like to go to Paris. Sip some wine and look out at the sun. But walking down Champs Elysees, we're just getting our way. I like loving you from where I stand. We are all we need for an adventure. When I hold your hand, that's our grand romance. So that one felt good. I felt like I was feeling that, which is what you want to do. You want to like try to get into the mood of the song as much as possible when you're recording. I had a teacher once tell me the microphone picks up everything, even your thoughts. <laughs> so you want to really feel your song. Okay, so we've got a couple of takes. What we're going to do with this is we're going to add another track. We're going to name this one just lead vocals or lead vox, whatever you like to call it. I'm going to move it. Um, sometimes I can drag them and sometimes I don't click them in quite the right spot. I'm going to move it up there. Uh, so I've got this blank lead vocals track and I have two take tracks. If you have a fancier DAW, like um, Logic or Ableton or Pro Tools, they have ways where you can record take tracks that are kind of nested within this lead vocals track and then they make it very easy to kind of choose which parts you want. We have to do it a little more manually in BandLab, but that's okay. Uh, so what we're gonna do is something called comping, which is we're gonna listen to a small snippet, a phrase, and listen through each of the takes, decide which one is our favorite, and then we're gonna drag it up to the lead vocals track that we are comping together. So to do that, we gotta mute each one and sort of drag it. This is where your loop button might co really come in handy if you wanna just kind of loop it. So we'll try, actually I wanna do it in number order. So we're gonna listen to this first one first, just this first phrase. Sometimes I think I'd like to go to Paris. Very nice, let's try the other one. Sometimes I think I'd like to go to Paris. I actually think I like the first one better. It's got a little better timing to me. So to drag just this piece up, 
what we're going to do is we're going to slice. Uh, if you right click on your track, you'll see lots of options for what you can do for this piece of audio that you've got. You could cut it, you could copy it and paste it somewhere else. What we want to do is this slice. You can see there's a, a short key for it too. So this is where we want to carefully place our cursor in a spot where it's on the line. I'm going to press slice here, or if we want to just do the short key, I can press S and I've got this little slice of audio and I am just gonna drag it directly above, or you could copy paste it if you want, but I'm dragging it directly above so that I've got this track in the main vocal track. We're just gonna do the same thing for each of the other tracks. So next one, let's see about take one. Sip some wine and look out at the sun. All right, let's see about take two. Sip some wine and look out at the sun. That time I like take two, that is nice. So we're gonna uh, make sure our track is selected. You'll see it in white if it's selected. Press S and S and we drag. That's as you see where I kind of <laughs> moved it and then it snapped to grid. That's where that feature is really nice. Okay. Next phrase, we'll do one more and then I'll just kind of drag things up at random. We're walking down Champs Elysees, but just getting our way. Okay, I'm gonna take both of those at once. We're walking down Champs Elysees, but just getting our way. Okay, yeah, I again like this red one, so I'm gonna go select, slice. There it is. Uh, we'll listen to one more. I like loving you from where I stand. Kind of nice. I like loving you from where I stand. Yeah, I like the red one again. So I, for right now, I am just gonna drag this red one up here, but normally what you would do is you would listen to each of the remaining tracks and you'd end up with kind of like a Frankenstein vocal where it's got some from this take and some from the other. It will often be true that you have kind of like one take that just really was awesome. One thing you'll want to look out for, it didn't happen to me here, I think I didn't even really get close, but sometimes you will have audio, you can look at your waveform here of your audio, and sometimes you'll have audio that gets too loud and clips where it looks like it reaches the edges and then gets a haircut, like a buzz cut. It flattens out. So when that happens, you're gonna get some distortion. And a couple of things you can do about that, you can sing more softly, you can sing a little further away from the microphone, but that might not be what you wanna do. That might not be the best sound that you want. So you can go to your settings, your sound settings, and check your input level. So this is my input here, and with this, you can drag this, and if your, your sound should be kind of hitting at around like 75%. If you're feeling like generally it's kind of like 60 to 75% of the way, that's a really good volume. We're gonna be able to hear it really well, um, but it won't be too loud that it's clipping, or even like getting close to the danger zone. So I already had mine kind of set there, but you might wanna mess with that, especially if uh, it's clipping or if it's really quiet <laughs> and you're and you're kinda like, oh, my waveform is like barely visible, then you might wanna turn it up a little bit. Okay, so that is what's going on with that. We've got our lead vocal comped. The next thing we wanna do is maybe add some effects to it. So I'm gonna mute all my take tracks. We don't need those anymore. So the first thing I wanna show you with the lead vocal, I teased it before, is this auto-tune uh, feature that they have. They have another place actually where you can uh, monitor your input level down here um, if you don't want to go all the way to settings to do that. So any effects here will have a little on and off switch here. You can turn it on with this button. Uh, this is going to be kind of your classic auto-tune effect where it's going to um, our pitches are all kind of relative and, and voices can sing like in between the pitches. This is going to snap it like kind of like that snap to grid to the 12 like perfect pitches. 
Uh, so let's hear what this classic autotune sounds like. Sometimes I think I'd like to go to Paris. Sometimes you won't hear it very much, but sometimes you really will. Sip some wine and look out at the Seine. It does some interesting things to vibrato. We're walking down Champs Elysees, we're just getting our way. I like loving you from where I stay. And that's actually pretty nice. Like, if you don't want that, like, um, T Pain auto tune sound, you can turn it down. I've got it to 26. And it's actually just kind of smoothing things out. It's a nice, like, polished pop sound. I probably don't want it for this song because this has a little more of an acoustic feel. But if you want it for your kind of like really polished pop sound, you could totally do it. I'll tell you that. Most songs you listen to have auto-tune on them, even though you, you don't necessarily hear that really classic, like bubbly auto-tune. Almost everybody's using it. So no shame in using it at all. They have some other cool things here. They have this duet feature that I wanna show you because I think this is a really cool um, way that you could figure out what some of your harmony parts could be. So I'll turn it up to heavy so we can really hear it. And here's what it does. Sometimes I think I'd like to go to Paris. <laughs> Sip some wine and look out at the sun. So this one's making some choices that I probably wouldn't make. There's some notes that I'm like, that's a weird note. But if I drag my cursor, if I click, you can um, get your cursor quickly to where you want if you click up on this time bar here. I want to see what it does in the... Um, bridge section. We are all we need for an adventure. When I hold your hand, that's our grand romance. So. <laughs> Again, it's got that like poppy auto tune -y sound, but that's pretty close to what I would do with like a parallel harmony, which we'll talk about how to do those in a minute. So that can, if you want to use it as is, use it. We can turn it down and make it sound a little more natural. And then if you want to just use it for inspiration for what you might sing with your own voice, that can be cool too. So for me, I'm going to turn it off. We're going to put some effects on our vocal to make it sound a little crisper, cleaner, um, juicier, all that good stuff. We've got options for presets here, and this is totally a good place to start. If you want to mess around with those and you kind of have no idea where to start, you could start with these presets. I will say they often have a chain of like four or five. And so if you've never seen any of them before, it can be a little overwhelming. So I do like to do it piece by piece. And I'll say too, that usually your voice is unique. <laughs> Everyone's voice is unique. So these presets aren't built for your voice in particular. They're built for kind of a generic voice or a generic guitar. Uh, so they won't be suited to your sound exactly. You'll need to manipulate them to really get what you want. And so um, I recommend just kind of going effect by effect because I think it's a little more digestible. So the first thing we're going to want to do is add an EQ. An EQ is boosting certain frequencies within our sound. Our sounds have multiple pitches in them. We have the fundamental, which is the one you most hear, but then we have all these upper partials that give it the tone that it has. So we want to mess with those a bit. I'm going to turn down, again, this will turn it on and off. I'm going to turn down the lows. So this low to high, these are really high sounds. And I'm going to turn this down because my voice is high. So I'm not singing at around 100 hertz. This is probably, if any sounds show up in that area, that's going to be like room noise. So I'm going to turn that down quite a bit. Uh, I sing kind of in this mid-rangey area and my voice has a lot of mid sounds to it. Uh, not mid like average, but <laughs> mid like uh, the pitch range is kind of boosted there. So I'm going to turn those down a little bit to balance it. I'm going to turn these up. Sometimes we get a little room noise in these areas too, but these really high ranges are areas where we have some consonants. Sometimes we like those to pop. And it's also areas where the voice just has a little sparkle. So we often just like to boost those and see what happens. Let's take a listen. I'm gonna mute this uh, ukulele track. Well, let's just take a listen. Sometimes I think I'd like to go to Paris. Sip some wine and look out at the Seine. You see, we took out a little bit of that boominess. We're walking down Champs-Élysées. 
that happens because we're not recording with the best microphone ever. And we reduce that low. We take out a little bit of that boominess. I'm actually going to turn that one down a slight bit too. Sometimes I think I'd like to go to Paris. You hear that? It's really subtle. And it's, you get used to hearing these sorts of things after a while. Sometimes these producer effects seem kind of magical um, or seem like, you know, I'll never hear those sorts of things. And you will eventually. You you do get used to it. Your ears kind of get attuned to, oh, I hear that difference. I like it. And if it's not making an audible difference for you, it's not a worthwhile effect. You don't need to use that. If you can't hear it, don't use it. Okay, so next thing we're going to want, um, let's see. I think next, uh, oh yeah, we should do a compressor next, of course. So a compressor is the other, um, one of the other ways that we're gonna mess with those dynamics if we have some clipping going on or some distortion, some, some red areas. Uh, and it also, what a compressor does is it kind of smushes that waveform so that as you can see on here, I've got some things, it's fairly even actually, but I've got some things that are like suddenly very loud and some things that are much, much quieter. What a compressor is gonna do is even that all out. Uh, I'm just gonna search for it. You can search, you can look in these um, categories over here to find, or you can search up here for what you want. They have a few different options here for compressors. I like this one because it's pretty simple. So I'm gonna use this one. The squeeze is how much it's gonna compress everything together. So I'm gonna turn that fairly high. And then when you compress things, it turns the volume down on them overall. So you want to make sure this is your gain is another word for volume, but volume before it goes out to the speakers, we call it gain. So I'm going to turn that up a little bit. And let's just see what happens with that. Sometimes I think I'd like to go to Paris. Sip some wine and look out at the sun. But walking down Champs Elysees, but just get in our way. I like loving. So what that did is we we hear a little like we hear a little room noise in that. So I am gonna turn it down. I'm gonna turn down the squeeze a little bit. But I like what it did. Sometimes I think I'd like to go to Paris. Just kind of A and B it for you. Switch on and Sip off. some wine and look out at the Seine. Sometimes I think I'd like to go to Paris. Everything's just a little smoother. We still want some volume variety in there. We still want some like highs and lows because that makes it sound expressive. That's a huge way that we're expressive with our voices. So we don't want to totally do away with that, but we want to control it a little bit, especially when we're balancing other voices. And our lead vocal is going to want to be like pretty strong. I'm going to add... One more effect here, I'm gonna add reverb. So reverb is kind of the the time that a sound hangs in the space. You'll hear it, it's uh, it's easier to hear than it kind of sounds as people describe it. Um, I am gonna use, you could use any of these and play around with them and they're really fun to mess with. I'm gonna use this studio reverb. So this is, how much of the reverb, how loud the reverb is in the mix. And this is the size of it. Do we want it to hang for a long time, like we're in a cathedral? Do we want it to hang for a little bit of time, like we're in a small room? For right now, I'm gonna turn it way up so we can hear it. And then the tone, 90%, that's how much of the tone of your sound is going through this reverb. So I want most of it, you generally want kind of all of it going through. So I'm gonna turn it up to 100, and let's hear what this sounds like. I'm gonna solo this so we hear just the voice. Sometimes I think I'd like to go to Paris. That's what we mean, it hangs. Sip some wine and look out at the sun. So I'm gonna turn that size down. But walking down Champs Elysees, but just get in our way. I like loving you from where I stay. I might even turn this down a little bit. We are all we need for an adventure. 
when I hold your hand, that's our grand romance so. so I'm just messing with things until I like what it sounds like. We could do that reverb, that sounds really nice. There is also this reverb over here, all the way to the right. This is a nice way that if you wanted all your tracks to have the same exact reverb, you could do this very easily for everything and just kind of adjust how much of it you get. I'm gonna turn this off and see if I like this reverb, let's see. Sometimes I think I'd like to go to Paris. Hmm, I'm gonna try it with this. Sip wind. some wine and look out at the Seine. It's hard to hear, honestly. Uh, so I think if we don't hear it that much, we don't need it. Sometimes I think I'd like to go to Paris. Sip some wine and look out at the Seine. That feels, that's even like a little too big for me, but that feels really nice. So now we've got this preset that we really like for our voices, or we've got this effects chain that we really like for our voices. We can turn this into a preset by going to save it. We can save this as, uh, let's save it as from where I stand. Vox. Oh, I already used that one. I got to try a different one. Um, from where I stand lead. Let's do that. So now I've got this preset and I can use this for every single other track that I use. I can adjust it, but I can have this array of effects very easily for every other vocal track I make. So last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some background vocals to this. We often call these BGVs for short. Uh, I am gonna show you three of the most common background vocals that we hear in songs. First one is a parallel. And for this, I'm gonna take us to my bridge part here. So a parallel harmony is what we heard with this auto pitch, with this duet. That's what we heard. It's the melody on one note of your scale. So mine is, da, we are all we need. And what you do is you go a third away, either above or below. So da, da, da and you sing something that matches the contour of your melody, but on that different starting note. This can be hard to figure out at first. Um, often it's really helpful to use uh, a keyboard or a pitch pipe or something to kind of help you find those notes. So if my melody was, we are all we need, da, da, da. We are all we need for an adventure. And you just start that melody up a couple of notes or down a couple of notes and try to match it. So we need a new track for our new background vocals. We're gonna do um, BGV Parallel. And I'm gonna keep these tracks muted. I don't need these, I just want my lead vocal, but I am gonna keep the lead vocal on because I wanna be able to hear it to try to match the timing of it. So here I go. Often it helps to kinda Hum you know before you start, make sure you've got it in your head. Then we all we need for an adventure. When I hold your hand, that's our grand romance. So I don't think my timing was perfect. And what you'll want to do is you'll want to try to get that timing nice and perfect. Ooh, and it looks like I clipped as well. So we might wanna try this again. Sometimes you do the different takes and sometimes you just say, eh, I, that wasn't my best take. We're gonna delete that, we're gonna try it again. So here we go, I'm gonna sing a little softer. I'm gonna remember that I'm a background singer, so I'm not the star here, so I'm gonna use a softer tone. And I'm gonna try this again. Then we are all we need for an adventure. When I hold your hand, that's our grand romance. So. Okay, much better. Look at that. That's a nice waveform. Okay, so I've got my parallel harmony. Uh, one thing that's really nice that you can do if you want to give a fuller sound is you can double this and pan them either direction 
nudge them a little bit so they sound like different voices, or you can record again so that you've got a different take with slightly different timings. And you'll have this effect of like a background choir or multiple people singing with you. So to do this, I am going to duplicate my track. If you do this, it will duplicate all of your settings and everything you've got on it. Actually, before I go and do that, I'm gonna put my preset on here. My presets, we've got my From Where I Stand leads. There it goes. And now I'm gonna duplicate my track or I could do Shift D to duplicate it. So here's my copy. I'm gonna name this one BGV Parallel Right and this one BGV Parallel Left because that's where I'm gonna put them. I'm gonna go pretty far to either side. And then on this one, I'm gonna zoom in a lot. And I'm gonna just take this and nudge it the tiniest bit. It's trying to snap to the grid. I don't want it to exactly in this instance. Okay, let's see how we did. We're all we need for an adventure. When I hold your hand, that's our grand romance. So pretty good. They were, of course, too loud at the beginning. We always want that lead vocal to be much hotter mixed. So I had to pull that back a lot. And I want more uh, reverb. I might just turn it up in the mix rather than uh, trying to get more uh, up like a bigger room size because I want it to still be the same size but I want these to be a little more washed out we are all we need for an adventure when I hold your hand that's our grand romance so Ooh, you're hearing some of those things at the end some of those like room noise and things like that if you want to really cut those out your comping will sort of do this for you, but you can also go all the way to the end of your track and scoot like that. You, you'll see this cursor that has left or right, or sometimes it's just like that if it's at the beginning. So we can cut off a little bit of that so that we don't have so much noise. You could do that for every moment when it's silent. That can often be really helpful. Uh, but other than that, I think that's lovely. So I'm gonna keep that. The next thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna do echoes. So echoes are kind of what they sound like. The main vocal sings something and you sing something after it. There's one spot that I think might be fun for this and it is this first phrase. Sometimes I think I'd like to go to Paris. To Paris. One little echo there I thought would be really cool. For that, I think I am just gonna use these same tracks that I just made. So I don't have to make a new track and sometimes that'll work or sometimes if you want it to have different effects than that later one, you might say, oof, I need to make a different track. You can just do that and drag them down. But I'm gonna see if this works. I'm gonna record it on the same track. I'm gonna select this one to make sure once you have multiple tracks going on, you could record to the wrong thing accidentally. It gets a little confusing. So you'll wanna go to the track and click on it so it turns purple and then or it might just turn whatever color the track is yeah it turns whatever color the track is and uh and then i'm gonna press record and go for it with my echo sometimes i think i'd like to go to paris to paris sips cute nice we could double that like we just did or a fun Addition to that might be that we could add a parallel harmony to my echoed harmony that I did. To Paris. Da, 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 to Paris. That would be what it would be. To Paris. So we're going to try that. Sometimes I. Oh, <laughs> I immediately recorded on the wrong track. We're going to go to this one. To Paris. Got to get it back in my head. To Paris. Sometimes I think I'd like to go to Paris. To Paris. Cute. 
cute. So we've got some effects on there. I like to go to Paris. To Paris. Sips. Nice. I think they work with those effects. We could always mess with it if we wanted to make it a little different. And of course we could get the timing a little tighter by doing some more takes. Last thing I wanna show you, I am gonna add a new track for this. Voice and audio is what we always want when we're recording. And I am gonna call this one, um, the BGB pads is what I'm gonna call this one. That name comes from synthesizers. We have synth pads where you play like nice thick synthy chords. And so that's what we're doing when we're doing this. We're imitating synthesizers or we're imitating like choral sounds. These are often like oohs and ahs in the background where you're singing in multiple takes, multiple notes, and you're making like a bed of chords for the lead vocal to exist on. While we're doing this, I'm gonna mute these other ones because I want to uh, I want to see if we could do this on its own or if we want to add the other harmony to it. So I'm gonna do a lower note for my first pad here. Um, my, I'm gonna do it for this section where we did our parallels. And my melody was, we are all we need. So I'm gonna do a lower one this time. We, dee dee, we. So it's not a parallel, it's I'm gonna just play it and see what notes I'm gonna sing first. This is often how you do it. We are all we need for an adventure. When I hold your hand, that's our grand romance. Hmm. Ooh. Oh, sorry, it'll be down here. Ooh. We are all we need for an adventure. Ooh, there we go. When I hold all right i got it you can see it's a lot of trial and error with these sometimes and sometimes you record something where you're like ah that one note is not good i gotta do it again Ooh, so that's my note before i was doing my melody note i don't want to just do that Ooh, here we go we are all we need didn't have the right one enabled. I'm glad I'm uh, modeling some common mistakes here. Uh, I'm also just gonna save while I'm thinking about it. All right, here we go. We are all we need for an adventure. When I hold your hand, that's our grand romance. So all right, I'm pretty happy with that. You can see that's a pretty low volume, so it might wanna stay that loud. I'm gonna pull it back just a hair, but I'm gonna leave it. Uh, and then I am going to add a new track. I don't think I've done my preset on here, so I'm gonna do that quickly. And then same thing for this one. I'm gonna do BGB pads upper. It's just helpful to name things that, something that you'll remember. Uh, you can name them whatever you like as long as you will remember what it is. Uh, so I'm gonna do an upper harmony now. It's gonna sound really similar to this parallel that I did. So my melodies. We are all da da. Ooh. I'm gonna see if I can just go for it. The uppers are usually a little easier for me. So let's try it. Ooh. Stay. We are all we need for an adventure. When I hold your hand, that's our grand romance. So <laughs> I don't think I got the right ending note, uh, but I got pretty close there. We are all we need for an adventure. When I again, I think I want more reverb on them. I'm going to turn that way up. And I might even for these mix a little bit of this reverb in just to make them super spacey and washy. Let's try it. We are all we need for an adventure. When I hold 
your hand that sacred romance so <laughs> and that's that ending part where i didn't get it right which i would go back and re-record let's see how it sounds with these parallels i think it might be really nice we are all we need for an adventure when i hold your hand that sacred romance so it's really starting to take shape there. So those are some of the most common ways that you might add BGVs or background vocals to your track and some of the most common effects that you would use. And I hope this has been a helpful tour of band lab and how you can produce your own vocals. Main thing to remember is have fun and listen and let your ears guide you. Follow what you like. And if you can't hear it, it's maybe not an important thing to include. So follow what your ears love, and I'm excited to see what you produce. Thanks, everyone.